Chapter 3 Metals and Non-Metals Introduction In Class 9, you have learned about various elements. You have seen that elements can be classified as metals or non-metals on the basis of their properties. Think of some uses of metals and non-metals in your daily life. What properties did you think of while categorizing elements as metals or non-metals? How are these properties related to the uses of these elements? Let us look at some of these properties in detail. Physical properties Metals The easiest way to start grouping substances is by comparing their physical properties. Let us study this with the help of the following activities. Collect the samples of following metals. Iron, copper, aluminium, magnesium, sodium, lead, zinc and any other metal that is easily available. Activity 1 Take samples of iron, copper, aluminium and magnesium. Note the appearance of each sample. Clean the surface of each sample by rubbing them with sandpaper and note their appearance again. After cleaning with sandpaper, all metals look shiny and bright. Metals in their pure state have a shining surface. This property is called metallic luster. Non-metals In the previous class, you have learned that there are very few non-metals as compared to metals. Some of the examples of non-metals are carbon, sulfur, iodine, oxygen, hydrogen, etc. The non-metals are either solids or gases, except bromine, which is a liquid. Do non-metals also have physical properties similar to that of metals? Let us find out. You may conclude that we cannot group elements according to their physical properties alone as there are many exceptions. For example, first, all metals except mercury exist as solids at room temperature. In activity 5, you have observed that metals have high melting points, but gallium and cesium have very low melting points. These two metals will melt if you keep them on your palm. Second, iodine is a non-metal but it is lustrous. Third, carbon is a non-metal that can exist in different forms. Each form is called an allotrope. Diamond is an allotrope of carbon, is the hardest natural substance known and has a very high melting and boiling point. Graphite, another allotrope of carbon, is a conductor of electricity. Fourth, alkali metals like lithium, sodium, potassium are so soft that they can be cut with a knife. They have low densities and low melting points. Elements can be more clearly classified as metals and non-metals on the basis of their chemical properties. If you want to see all the syllabus chapters in this format, then call us on the description of the number. Chemical Properties of Metals what happens when metals are burnt in air? You have seen that magnesium burns in air with a dazzling white flame. Do all metals react in the same manner? Almost all metals combine with oxygen to form metal oxides. 
metal plus oxygen gives metal oxide. For example, when copper is heated in air, it combines with oxygen to form copper oxide, a black oxide. 2Cu, that is copper, plus O2 gives 2CuO, that is copper oxide. Similarly, aluminium forms aluminium oxide. This may be represented as 4Al, that is aluminium, plus 3O2 gives 2Al2O3, that is aluminium oxide. Recall from Chapter 2 how copper oxide reacts with hydrochloric acid. We have learned that metal oxides are basic in nature. But some metal oxides, such as aluminium oxide, zinc oxide, etc., show both acidic as well as basic behavior. Such metal oxides, which react with both acids as well as bases to produce salts and water, are known as amphoteric oxides. Aluminium oxide reacts in the following manner with acids and bases. Al2O3 plus 6HCl gives 2AlCl3 plus 3H2O. Al2O3 plus 2NaOH gives 2NaAlO2, which is sodium aluminate, plus H2O. Most metal oxides are insoluble in water. But some of these dissolve in water to form alkalis. Sodium oxide and potassium oxide dissolve in water to produce alkalis as follows. Na2O in solid form plus H2O in liquid form gives 2NaOH in aqueous form. K2O in solid form plus H2O in liquid form gives 2KOH in aqueous form. We have observed that all metals do not react with oxygen at the same rate. Different metals show different reactivities towards oxygen. Metals such as potassium and sodium react so vigorously that they catch fire if kept in the open. Hence, to protect them and to prevent accidental fires, they are kept immersed in kerosene oil. At ordinary temperature, the surfaces of metals such as magnesium, aluminium, zinc, lead, etc. are covered with a thin layer of oxide. The protective oxide layer prevents the metal from further oxidation. Iron does not burn on heating, but iron filings burn vigorously when sprinkled in the flame of the burner. Copper does not burn, but the hot metal is coated with a black-colored layer of copper oxide. Silver and gold do not react with oxygen even at high temperatures. अगर आप अपने सिलेबस के सारे चैप्टर्स इस फॉर्मेट में देखना चाहते हैं, तो हमें डिस्क्रिप्शन में दिए गए नंबर पर कॉल करें। What happens when metals react with water? Metals react with water and produce a metal oxide and hydrogen gas. Metal oxides that are soluble in water dissolve in it to further form metal hydroxide. But all metals do not react with water. Metal plus water gives metal oxide plus hydrogen. Metal oxide plus water gives metal hydroxide. 1. Metals like potassium and sodium react violently with cold water. In case of sodium and potassium, 
the reaction is so violent and exothermic that the evolved hydrogen immediately catches fire. 2K in solid form plus 2H2O in liquid form gives 2KOH in aqueous form plus H2 in gaseous form plus heat energy. 2Na in solid form plus 2H2O in liquid form gives 2NaOH in aqueous form plus H2 in gaseous form plus heat energy. 2. The reaction of calcium with water is less violent. The heat evolved is not sufficient for the hydrogen to catch fire. Ca in solid form plus 2H2O in liquid form gives CaOH twice in aqueous form plus H2 gas. Calcium starts floating because the bubbles of hydrogen gas formed stick to the surface of the metal. 3. Magnesium does not react with cold water. It reacts with hot water to form magnesium hydroxide and hydrogen. It also starts floating due to the bubbles of hydrogen gas sticking to its surface. 4. Metals like aluminium, iron and zinc do not react either with cold or hot water, but they react with steam to form the metal oxide and hydrogen. 2Al in solid form plus 3H2O in gaseous form gives Al2O3 in solid form plus 3H2 in gaseous form. 3Fe in solid form plus 4H2O in gaseous form, that is steam, gives Fe3O4 in solid form plus 4H2 in gaseous form. 5. Metals such as lead, copper, silver and gold do not react with water at all. What happens when metals react with acids? You have already learned that metals react with acids to give a salt and hydrogen gas. Metal plus dilute acid gives salt plus hydrogen. But do all metals react in the same manner? Let us find out. Hydrogen gas is not evolved when a metal reacts with nitric acid. It is because HNO3 is a strong oxidizing agent. It oxidizes the hydrogen produced to water and itself gets reduced to any of the nitrogen oxides that is N2O, NO or NO2. But magnesium and manganese react with very dilute HNO3 to evolve hydrogen gas. You must have observed in activity that the rate of formation of bubbles was the fastest in the case of magnesium. The reaction was almost the most exothermic in this case. The reactivity decreases in the order magnesium is more reactive than aluminium, which is more reactive than zinc, which is more reactive than iron. In the case of copper, no bubbles were seen and the temperature also remained unchanged. This shows that copper does not react with dilute hydrochloric acid. If you want to see all the chapters in this format, then call us in the description of the number. For more educational videos, subscribe to our channel Home Revise.